So we are reserving a lot of questions that involve centripetal force, centripetal acceleration for this week, as it's going to be due next Monday. So this is a really a, a single question that um, asking you relatively simple question that uh, asking you to memorize one formula. So it asks, um, calculate the centripetal force on the end of some length radius wind turbine oh, blade <laughs> that is rotating at some oh, um, 0 0.5 revolutions per second. Uh, I'm going to use letter F and I'll explain it in a bit and assume the mass is M. Okay, uh, it's uh, talking about centripetal force that reminds me of centripetal acceleration which is given by the formula that centripetal acceleration is uh, for something undergoing uniform circular motion it's the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius of the circle that thing is going in so so that formula is in the back of my mind we are going to be using it and this is really the thing to remember whenever you have centripetal force centripetal force is always related to centripetal acceleration by mass times the centripetal acceleration and uh, that's a I, I don't give a blanket statement like that often because usually when we talk about acceleration i try to say it's the net force that's related to the acceleration and the reason i can make this blanket statement is because the centripetal force is a special kind of force special kind in that it's not a type of force at all it's not a force you would identify separately on a free body diagram what a centripetal force is it is a net force this is already kind of a net force in order to get centripetal force you add up all the forces in your system and uh, that net force has a possibility of being centripetal force so the Centripetal force is a subcategory of net force where if the net force somehow results in circular motion. So that's why I can say that centripetal force is always related to centripetal acceleration because as a matter of definition, that's how they are restricted. So, um, so yeah, it says um, that, and I think it says assume the mass is six kilogram and I think I'm gonna assume one more thing that I kind of need to be able to solve this question, which is not only am I going to assume that mass is that, I am going to assume that all of the mass is at that distance L. Because if it's anything else, if it's like a uniformly distributed turbine, then it gets super, gets complicated to the degree that we can't quite handle yet. So um, we're just gonna assume entire mass, it's at that end L, even though that's not how a blade usually looks. We'll make the simplifying assumption so that we can answer this question. So, um, so centripetal force is simply going to be given by mass, the given mass, times the, ooh, I don't have V. Okay, okay. So I need to, uh, need to figure through that. So some sort of V squared over R. So I need to figure this V portion. Um, well, and R portion, that that's just going to be this L. So let me put in L there for R. So V, um, I need to relate that to this given frequency. And um, I guess the uh, there are different ways to relate it. There are these formulas that you could use. Omega is 2 pi F and uh, delta X, arc length is... Um, uh, r delta theta and related to that v is r not r uh, v is oh yeah i think there's actually r there v is r omega there's all this stuff um <laughs> so if you have a bunch of circular motion formulas memorized you could use that but let me st go start from basics let me just think this through okay so i need to figure out the velocity of this turbine and okay uh, let me just visualize its motion it's a uh, going through these trajectories 
And it's a question of, all right, um, with those trajectories in mind, um, if I want to calculate the speed, the tangential speed, well, speed is distance per time. So I think I can calculate that. So I can think of one full circle of motion. I can calculate the distance for that one full circle. And if I can figure out the time, I can divide it by the amount of time it takes for that one full circle. And then that'll give me my speed. So one full circle is the circumference of the circle. <laughs> so that ought to be two pi times the radius of the circle. Amount of time. Uh, this is where you have to kind of um, either remember things about frequency or figure things out from the units given here. So if we say something um, rotates at a frequency of 0 0.5 revolutions per second, what we really mean is um, it takes, amount of time it takes for one revolution is the reciprocal of that. So amount of time uh, for one revolution will be 1 over 0 0.5 revolutions per second. You can kind of work through the units and see. When you work through the units, you get 1 over 0 0.5 second per revolution. So, so here we are given the information for how long it takes for one full revolution. It takes, um, I guess, uh, let me write it symbolically this way, 1 divided by frequency. So. Yeah, I, I think that I have all the numbers for this. So uh, I can plug that in. Um, so my centripetal force is going to be mass times this whole thing for speed. <laughs> so it'll be 2 pi L. Uh, let me not overcomplicate it and work out this uh, nested fraction business and say it's 2 pi L over 1 over F or 2 pi L times frequency. That's the speed. Square it divided by L. And if you want, you can simplify this a little bit, you know, cancel out one factor of L here, but you can also just plug in the numbers and get the numerical answer. And that numerical answer, um, yeah, I think all the units are already given in sensible SI units. So if you're using these numbers, it'll just automatically <laughs> result in unit of Newton. So, so yeah, that's, uh, uh, so this question is really here so that you are thinking about the centripetal acceleration formula, and it's really the preparation for this week's work, where um, there's more <laughs> steps involved in figuring out how the centripetal force relates to other things.